You're listening to Pro Booth Talk, education and insights for photo booth company owners. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. This is Pro Booth Talk. I am Jason Whaley. I've got Lap Lee with me as always. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Yes, welcome. So, Lap, I am in the market. I need some some shoes, and I'm hoping that you could help me out with it. I, I I know you've got some insight on some a lot of stuff. What are the best shoes to purchase right now? Great question, Jason. I feel like we get this question in our industry a lot. And for me to answer this question, I would probably recommend you some heels for. Yeah, you, like how many inches though? Do you do you think I'm a I'm a stiletto guy? Definitely not stilettos. I do puppy. What are they? Kitten heels. But this is this is a great this is a great opening just because I feel like that question is very is too in depth. But when people ask it, they think it's just a simple direct answer. Like with shoes, you have four inch heels, you have kitten heels, you have sneakers. Like what? What are you using the shoes for? Like, are you actually wearing them? Do you have them on display? I know we talked about that. Like, what is the purpose of those yeah, shoes? Yeah, a lot of time people will buy, stand in line for hours to buy shoes that they never intend to wear. They're going to resell or they're going to hang on to for years. Yes. Or uh, maybe you're flat-footed and, and need special types of shoes. Or you have wide shoes. feet. Or the yes. Feet. Yeah, there's the, yes. the word. Uh, or maybe uh, you want platforms. You need to get taller. Maybe you're worried about the the bling or you need those red bottoms like there there's just uh yeah, that is yeah without the information i am and also you know maybe i i mean i specifically said the shoes were for me but if someone just said hey what are the best shoes are we talking about uh 13 year olds that, that want wheelies is that wheelies. is that still a thing or do wheelies still exist <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Are you using it for skateboarding where you need like the shoes to grip? Are you using it for basketball where you need it to like flex and, you know, be able to handle the jumps? You know, are you are you using it for running? So I think that question just is just too very. It's not in depth enough, you know, like when you're asking what's the best, like, what do you think is the best? Jason, like when people ask, like in our industry, like what's the best camera? What's the best software? Like, where do you what what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, there's a lot of problems because, uh, first of all, you, you you have to ask yourself, like, best in what ca – like, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? But once you even narrow that down, like, best is still very subjective. Like, you and I may be serving the exact same activation to the exact same client at the exact same time. Like, uh, I don't know, like a, a one of these, like, cooking shows or something like that. But you still may come with a different camera than me because – your interpretation of best or or your what you are looking for in, in a, a camera may be different from what I'm looking for in a camera. So, I mean, best is just such a vague, impossible concept to get behind. Yeah, I agree. So if someone's asking what's the best best camera, of course, you know, we, we need some information. What are you doing with the camera? What, what are you trying to do? We know that you're in the photo industry, but are you uh, have a target demographic? Are you just doing standard photo booths? Do you want to do things where the camera could come out easily and be attached to different riggings and whatnot? Uh, so there's a lot of different concepts there. And once we get to that point, or what's your budget? Like best within a budget? Like this, define what, what best means to you. Does that mean best picture quality, more functions, uh, more bells and whistles, best price? Uh, so, so there's just so many variables. The easiest best. to use what's the easiest to use could possibly be the best to somebody what's the cheapest could possibly be the best to somebody and then when you start talking about like best camera like are you talking about the best camera on the market because then you're talking about a few grand <clears throat> like five five digit you know mark then then we're talking about are you able to even manage do you even know how to use that camera if you're talking if you're talking about the best camera on the market you probably talking about you know, eight, nine, ten thousand, and then like twelve thousand after you factor in fancy lenses, like um, you know, prime lenses and and things like that, L lenses or whatnot. Do you even is that too much camera for you? Do you even know how to adjust settings for something like that? You know, because the best camera doesn't mean that you know how to use it yourself. You might be struggling to use a basic DSLR. You might not know light settings. The, the what is it? The 
pyramid, triangle, lighting, pyramid. I don't know these terms. I know what, how to use it. I don't know these terms. Yeah, know the ratios and the math, not the name. I felt that way yeah. with Photoshop for years because I, I was kind of like self-taught Photoshop and, yeah. and whatnot. And uh, at one point I wanted to become a Adobe Ace, which is like a Adobe like certification that says, you know, uh, Photoshop real well. And I did like a pretest online and I didn't know what any of the words were because <laughs> I, yeah. I had always just just knew what the concepts were. So I had to, to go uh, to like prep classes and and learn what That's all the, the things that I was already doing what yeah. they're called so but it's it's valid and like i don't mean to like insult or uh you know people coming on like if you're not in the industry i guess it's a valid question to come in and say hey what, what's the best i want to be the best in in my market what's the best software what's the best kiosk so the aim here is really i mean to to educate of let you know why so many people are going to attack you when you ask that question uh because it's it's just too vague it's not a real question it begs for more clarification and and research on your part of what you're actually trying to accomplish and it's really good because now you know that you need to to look at those things uh like if you are just looking at doing backyard birthday parties and things like that doing a really small side gig on the weekend then obviously that's going to what you would call best would be certainly uh, much different from what we're taking to, uh, you know, activations at the the Super Bowl or something like that. And sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're they're the same depending on what the client needs. Right. So really honing down on what what your goals are and what your budget is, how much you want to spend, how much experience you have with cameras and and technology and in general. Like, are you really comfortable on a on a computer or an iPad or, you know, do you have to uh, have your 12 year old son, you know, open Netflix for you. So that, that, that all those things are important. Yeah. I, the, the, the software side, I feel like that question comes up a lot on the software side and <clears throat> going back to what you're saying, like if you're doing very cookie cutter, basic like strips, you really don't need anything that is that, that, that gives you the kind of control that certain software will give you. You know, like I know our team, we primarily use Breeze for like 90 some percent of our, our events, um, but we do very custom programming at times, not all the time, but at times um, that some software can or may not be able to do. If you're not doing those type of events, you don't necessarily need to explore and learn um, harder software or like custom programming because you might not be offering that to your clients. So for me, Breeze is best, but for someone who you just need, like if you have attendants who just need like very user-friendly user interface, that's like very in your face, easy to use. Certain software might not fit you, you know, because then you're talking about more complex programming on the back end that your staff might not know how to use. So even though I think the software I use is the best for me, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best for your circumstances, for your use case scenario, if you have staff or if you're not that tech savvy. And I know this comes up a lot. Like there's people that have been in this industry for a long, long time, you know, eight, nine, 10 years, just as long as, as we have. And, you know, they might not be as tech savvy. They can use software that's more plug and play um, and they do great and it works for them. That software is the best software for them. That's not going to be the best software for me just because I need a lot more robust um, software for the custom stuff that we do. When you ask like, what's the best software that really comes down. And this, this goes back to like, you really have to, you can't really, this industry is not one of those things where you can just jump in and be like, I'm going to learn this right away. We're going to figure out like the best of everything. And we're just going to pump out photo boost because I feel like the education side is really big because there's so many components. There's the tech side, there's the software side, the hardware side, there's the troubleshooting side. So there's no best. Yeah. And with software specifically, <laughs> it's, it's really easy to kind of uh, like all of them have trial programs. So that's really easy. You can always just say, uh, Hey, I'm, I'm going to be doing a photo boost. It's going to be a side gig. I'm going to be focusing on this demographic. Yes. And could you guys give me a couple softwares that I can start playing around with and looking into and what would you recommend? And I would always say like, what do you recommend? Not what, what is the best? Because you're just going to have people, a ton of people going in there and telling you why the best doesn't, doesn't exist. And uh, the other thing, the other thing, Jason is like some people that come in, 
they only have Macs or they only have iPads. So certain mm -hmm. software, you can't even consider that software. So you ask me like, what's the best software? And someone says Breeze. You can't even use Breeze. Well, you can. Breeze has an iPad software. But you know what I'm saying? Like your the hardware you have the matters on what you actually, the direction you move as well. It really, I agree. Like take advantage of the free trials, you know, try out the workflows because maybe you have one part of the components needed, but you don't have the other. Um, and just always knowing like what's out there, you know what your limits are, you know what um, your capabilities are. Even if you don't do, because when I joined this industry, I never thought I was going to do the stuff that I do. You know, I don't think any of us do. Like most right. of us just think we're going to snap a photo, print out a strip, maybe print out a four by six as we, you know, as the years go by, you're like, okay, strips, we're not going to do, we're going to do four by six. But I never imagined that we would do or even have the type of requests that we have, you know? So you want to have the ability to know like different software and um, have experience with different software. So you know what the capabilities are, you know what the challenges are, you know like how hard it is to work with specific software. So if someone comes at you like, we need this type of delivery, this type of output, you already know out of all the software that you use, there's maybe two that have the capability and you know that, you know, the learning curve on both of them. Sometimes you have to learn stuff like on the fly within like a couple of days or a week or so. So just being familiar with like the back end for all the software will really help you in your career, especially if you start moving towards the corporate side because they drop stuff in your lap. So last minute, right? <laughs> like some stuff takes you like six months to learn and develop and they will hit you up like the week of the event and be like, hey, can you do this? You know, like, so be prepared, you know, don't try to find that. I feel like finding shortcuts on like the quickest way to find the best software, the best camera, the best printer, you're not going to know what the limitations of everybody, all the other offerings are. So you won't know why the printer or the camera or the software that you're going with, you won't know why you're choosing that for your or why it's you don't you won't know why it's considered the best you know like why most boothers use it like you have to have the experience um and the know-how so that you can confidently say you know what we don't use that printer because you know my own experience like i've had other printers where the um the pastels don't print as accurate like the turquoise and the pinks and you don't know that until you've actually used those different printers you know yeah, and that's something to consider also. You know, everyone wants to know the best, but they're never asking for the worst, which obviously is just as, as silly of a question, but we don't see that. And it's something that people should be approaching in the same way. You know, I, I'm, I'm looking at, say, Software X. What issues are you guys seeing with that? Or what kind of troubles, the pros and cons? Like they should be weighing out both sides and even yeah. joining the groups. Like if you join the Darkroom Booth group and the Snappick and the Curator and the uh, Breeze, and uh, you'll kind of see like some of the pain points and, and what people are doing and kind of learn st some stuff there. Like I could tell you that I've joined a group recently and uh, learned that, that the uh, software is, is way more involved than I expected. And I think a lot of, I'm not going to say, cause I don't want to discourage people from using it cause it is a really strong software, but I think a lot of newbies, if they join that group, and saw these words that they don't even know what they mean, I think they very quickly understand like this software, even if people are recommending it to me, is probably not the best to start on. It's not where I should be uh, because there's lots of things that just are a lot more in depth and involved than, than other softwares. So not it's, wondering what software. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> And yeah, I think, you know, I agree though. Like um, I hear a lot of people who have, shared with me they think like certain ipad software is like very expensive right and you and me we've been doing this for so long we understand why that software is costly because we've been through the ringer with other software that come you know like where we have like this the photo capture separate the sharing station separate the the microsite and things like that all separate so with this software, everything is just an all-in-one solution. So we understand the value of that. So when we pay out, not that I'm saying raise your prices, guys, but I'm saying when we pay, you know, the annual subscription, like we don't feel like it is expensive because we know in past years, the other solutions that we've used, that it ends up being as costly as this software as a, you know, all-in-one solution, but a lot, a lot less headache, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's a really great example of that because 
people who are new in the industry have constantly shared with me like i can't justify that cost and i'm just like just the sharing station alone the way we used to our old workflow was already pretty pricey and you add i'm on so glad we that, don't do like, sharing stations regularly anymore we don't do sharing stations anymore as much we used to do them back in when we first started like the first yeah. few years and it was Jason, I mean, I don't know if you, I mean, you, I know you have to know what I'm talking about. Just like the networking, the headache, like we always had a two man team and one person would spend like 70% of the time just troubleshooting the network, you know, yeah. like the files not transferring over. So with the new software that's on the market and it's so easy for all of us now, like I feel we've made strides in, in software in our industry and I don't even think twice about sending them my money because I already know the headache that we had in prior years, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if people want recommendations that we, our very first episode, I believe is called what's in your bag and, and Lap and I both discussed in detail what we use for every type of booth and kiosk software, cameras, printers. Uh, so that all that information is there. But just a, a brief breakdown, I'd say, of where people should start with, with kiosks. I mean, again, first, you need to know what you're doing. If you're doing 360s or, or photo booths, if you want to streamline things with, like, iPads or you want to take higher quality photos, well, we can still say that with DSLRs, but you can do that with iPads now, too. So I guess it's just more of a, if you're more comfortable in the Mac atmosphere or the Windows atmosphere, uh, if you're planning on doing like droplets and things like that. Uh, you need to know those things before you start looking at booths and then ask for recommendations and definitely go to PBX where you can walk the floor and get hands on with all these booths. Uh, actually, you know, fiddle around with them. A lot of things that I think new people think are important aren't really important when I, it's kind of like uh, Homer Simpson's car that he designed, like all the things that, that seem to make sense that are great with the drink holders and snack machines and all these things that ju just ultimately uh, aren't don't don't make sense like there's a lot of things that i wanted when i started and uh and i don't want to say that these companies with like the lights and stuff are bad because it, it it certainly fits demographics in certain markets but i liked the rolling lights on the sides of the booths and stuff and once i got are you talking about the neon led lights the track lights? yeah now i hate them <laughs> and my clients hate them and they're so like we've still got kiosks with it and we don't turn them on at all because yeah. our clients, all every client wants nothing to do with the, yeah. the rolling neon lights and stuff. And when I was looking for, for booths, I was like, Oh, that, that's a lot of versatility that adds some pizzazz that will grab people's attention. You can match wedding colors or brand colors and, and no client wants those things. So, yeah, you know, it's, you really have to get into those conversations and, and read things because you don't know what, what to ask. So just, read as much as you can in the different networks or the different forums go to places like the photo booth expo and walk the floor and get hands on uh, and see what jumps out to you and, and uh, ask for setup demos look at what the the product looks like all boxed up in a case and decide like is that going to fit into your car i i hear all the time yeah. still years into the industry that people fall in love with the mirror booth and then get it yes. and realize that they need to buy a trailer or a truck or something. And I feel like at this point, the people that are selling mirror booths, since this is like an ongoing constant year after year, month after month thing that they should be telling people, Hey, before yeah. you buy this, make sure you have a vehicle that, that fits it. And I can understand at the beginning, like, why would we tell people that? Of course they should know that they need to be able to fit the product that they're buying. But we, we've awesome. learned over the years that they, that they don't. And people are buying it and realizing that they need to get a new car now or a trailer to pull in. Or that and they the, can't even lift it. That They can't, they can't even lift it. It's themselves. too heavy. Yeah. yeah. So all those, those things. Walk the floor. Get to these places. Get hands-on. Read. When, when, you, when you hone it down to a couple kiosks that you're deciding between, just like the software, all those kiosks have like – dedicated groups where people are, are discussing troubleshooting and add-ons and t tweaks and things like that. And you could get in there and kind of see the pain points. Unfortunately, some of the companies uh, will remove any comments that are negative. So you can't really get a real, real feel for uh, if there's a lot of troubleshooting issues going on, but it's definitely a good, good place to, uh, to start for kiosks uh, software. 
like we mentioned before, like uh, get some recommendations for the types of systems that you want to use and, and download them in, on your computers and, and just test them, try them. Yeah. Just just use the hell out of them and push them to their limits and see what you're more comfortable with. And it's, and it's not a it's not a end all either. So it's not like if you're just joining the market and you're just starting a photo booth company, you're like, okay, I want to, you know, it's not like you make a decision on one software and you're going to be using that software mm -hmm. for the the entirety of your career. So, you know, when I yeah. started real I started, quickly, how many softwares do you use right now? I use whatever software I need for that event. So all of them. Yeah. I mean, I lean heavy towards certain ones that I think are less heavy processing or, you know, like more streamlined for me. So there's a lot of software that can do the same custom stuff. It's just some software just you have on the back end. It takes a lot more. It takes more. It's more involved for you to program. So I use whatever software I need. And that's not a bullshit answer. I know some people think that's a bullshit answer. <laughs> it's not because sometimes you have a client that um, on my own personal Facebook, I just shared like um a video activation that we did like four or five years ago and the client had asked for um two separate photo scenes but they wanted to clip in video from like a telenovela but like they wanted clips of like their show um at the beginning the middle and then the outro and at that time there was not a lot of like video software available and on top of that not only did they want to do stills and output video, but they also wanted to print. So that took, you know, that took a lot of different, we had to interface a lot of different software to make that type of output. And then we had to add music, which at the time, I, my vague memory tells me at the time that was not that streamlined as it is today. Um, so I use whatever it takes. So knowing all the different software really makes a difference for me for all the custom stuff that we do. Um, and it's mm -hmm. it's not a lot of custom stuff. I don't want to put that out there like, oh, we do all because it's just when that opportunity comes up or that challenge comes up, like knowing all your, your capabilities and all your limitations for the different software and how you can intertwine them and make them work for the output that you want, it really will help you. I know I'm getting more in depth with all of that, but um yeah, like try all the software. Don't, it's not, it's not the end all. So if you decide, when I first started, I started with the easiest software, which is DSLR booth. Not that I'm promoting them or anything. It's just, that's just like the easiest when I first started as far as like plug and play, the user interface was pretty decent. I switched out of it because of issues that I had with like the back end and whatnot. I don't go into it, but I went into darkroom then i went to breeze then i use uh, i also use pbu um, i've done boof i don't know if you remember that software yeah and then like was it just boof or photo booth photo booth yeah yeah and then like all the different ipad software before like the main ones came out these past like four years so anything that comes out i always try to put my hands on to at least like it, you know what's crazy is i feel like, and i could be wrong but i and i can't remember the name of it but I feel like the very first photo booth software for iPad, like it's what is it that one that was like always in beta and eventually went away? Do you know which one I'm talking about? Yes, I used that one. That was one they actually they actually outputted they actually worked into their workflow video before the current. Yeah, it's just crazy it that was, the first it was one so, to market. It was the first one to market. Yeah. Super powerful super powerful jason like i use that i was on a subscription for them and we were able to put out stuff that like nobody was putting out because there was not software for ipads to do that at that time and yeah they they only lasted like a couple years and it was it's mind-boggling to me because they came out with video on ipad before anybody else did um I must have been a scaling remember. issue i think he always tried to stay as a one it was a one it was show. a one man yeah. yeah, they were based here in California, I think, but it was yeah, they they had they had so much potential. But that that just goes into like, you know, like how you you can have a great product, but if you're not like presented to your clientele, it just, you know, you might not make it because it's not it's not that the software wasn't great. He just needed mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and it was marketing too. Right? It always felt like a software that this guy designed for himself that he's letting people use where you have things like snap picker curator that are like actual products that yeah. have like teams behind them. They're marketed yeah. as products, not like, Hey, I'm making this. And if you give me some money, I'll let you use it forever. 
you yeah. know, and that's how I always felt with his, his thing. It never really seemed like a viable real product to me, just something that was a side hobby for him. But at the time it was amazing. Like it was so innovative at that time. Um, but yeah, always be learning. And I know we bring up this, this is like the topic we always, we always revert back to like education and like learning and like trying to be aware of what's around you, what's available out in our market and like educating yourself, talking to like vendors, talking to other boothers, because you know, there's certain things that you might not know that someone else might have some insight on, you know? And, yeah. and when you ask about the best, the reason why you never get a straight answer is because it's ever evolving. Like today, one thing is the best and tomorrow the best for your specific circumstance. Because at one time I was a budget provider. So my circumstance was the cheapest I could find. <laughs> I charge, I didn't charge a lot. So there's no way that I could afford the software subscriptions that I have now. There's no way because I was, you know, charging pennies to the dollar. So at the time, if you, if I went out there back then and was like, what's the best software and someone recommended a software that was what is this software, $8,000 a year? I couldn't even comprehend that because I probably didn't even make 8,000 when I first started, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So that would be a ridiculous recommendation to me at that time, you know? Now I definitely agree, like the software that you invest in, the tools that you have really make your job and your, your career a lot easier and it's more streamlined and it makes you more valuable as a company. Um, but yeah, so you're, you're always growing. So you should be growing your knowledge and, and what's best to you today is going to be something different than what's best to you tomorrow. Yeah. And just think of your own clients on the same, same note uh, as another example. If a, if a couple came to you, a bride, for example, and said, I want your best photo booth. We don't have a budget. I just want to, to be the absolute very best. And you showed up with, I don't know what could be misconceived as the best maybe a, a glam bot or something and maybe at the end of the wedding she's like that was really great but that's not what we were looking for we were looking for something really intimate with yeah. great picture quality and an album like like the best just doesn't mean anything yes you know without context yes that's that's for the stuff that we do in, in our clientele because i agree with you like at a wedding there are certain things that might be overkill, you know, like light painting at a wedding is pretty cool, but most people are not going to get into that, you know, like that's, that's not going to be, especially if you have like a wedding that has like an older crowd where they don't, mm -hmm. you know, they take a lot of time for us to like walk them through that might not go over well. We did a, we did a light painting event for like a wee company and they were not, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they Not were the so chill that they couldn't even get into, you know, we had like very little sessions because they're too chill. Like they need something more chill and light painting is very involved. Like it takes a lot of right waving of the wands or posing and, you know, it's a I lot haven't of done that in a couple of years. I love light painting. You yeah, know, I, I, I love it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's the same in our industry. Like when you ask this question, nobody's trying to be a jerk to you. They really are just wanting to you to like get those gears thinking like when you're asking that are you actually thinking about like how involved this question actually is like the answer is actually very very involved you know yeah because you're not being a jerk to your your couple when you ask them like okay you yeah. want the best that's fantastic tell me more about your vision uh you know what where are you getting married at what's the crowd going to be because like if someone even if they call me asking for a 360 and i hear it's a wedding we're going to immediately start pushing them away from a 360 because a lot of times they just see this trend and they think they want it. But like weddings, people want takeaways. They want the thing in their hand. And as funny as it is to get grandma on a 360, like what is she going to do with that video when she's done? Like she, she won't even know how to open it and certainly not going to have somewhere to share it or, or use it. And of course, if that's what they want, if, if they're dead set on that, then, then that's great. We can provide that, uh, in a way that's not going to turn their wedding into a carnival and draw the attention away from the, the couple. But it, we're always going to, to try to, to uh, steer them in a direction that we think they're going to be more happy at the end of the day, uh, you know, which is, is going to be the more timeless balancing the innovation with, with tradition. If you want something more timeless and maybe a glamor or a portrait setting or something like that is going to be a, a, a better solution because you're going to get those photos. You're, People are going to be able to share them online, but also take them home and have them for forever. Maybe they're going to be on magnets, magnets, and you can put them on the 
a fridge forever or, or a file cabinet or work or, or whatever, but things that people are, are going to really uh, appreciate and, and cherish. And that's kind of the, the mode of a wedding. So sometimes your client doesn't even know what's best. Yeah. But anyways, 30 minutes, we're wrapping this thing up quick. No, 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 but I have, I have. Uh... Good. <laughs> what, what more do you have? I have? So I have an example of like the best and not. So I love, I love my men booths. We use them for most all of our events. Someone recently asked me about an event on Catalina Island. I'm not going to say who, but it wasn't for myself, but on Catalina Island, it's a little island. You have like a limited ferry service to get there and ferry service back. That ferry has specific weight and, and luggage limits. So like to run a photo booth on this island, my men booth, which is not cut it because it wouldn't even fit like the weight limitations or even the mm. size dimensions. So even though every time someone asks what's the best men, what's the best photo booth, my answer is always men booth because for most all of our events, men booths are like my go-to. But there's certain scenarios where even though I think the men booth is the best for our company, for a scenario like that, I would never bring a men booth. I would break everything down to as minimal as possible because the best for that situation is very small, very portable, very lightweight, you know, like maybe a C stand, a camera, a flash, that's it, you know, and a small portable printer. If you have like one of those QW, you know, those right. little tiny printers, like I would pack everything down as small and portable as possible, even though Minboos are very portable for that situation. That definitely would not be the best. And this is kind of an example of like, just to put things in perspective, like when you ask what's the best, we keep saying like, it depends on what your needs are. And that's not just like quality. That's not just like your clientele. It also comes down to like the circumstances of the event. You know, you're doing an event on a boat. They have limits. They don't allow more than two bags. For you to bring a min booth onto Catalina Island, you would need like three or four people just to have enough allowance in the baggage you know and that's that wouldn't even be worthwhile for you to pay off all these people for a wedding with your men booth like it, the best for that situation would be a lot more portable compact you know and that's kind of an example of like just to put things in perspective for some of you guys you know and the same thing with like the camera where we bring up like the best camera is going to be like a full frame it's likely going to be a full frame super expensive, few thousand dollars. Then you have the investment of the lenses, things like that. But most of us don't need all of that because we're not photographers. We're not capturing these artistic type images and post editing or anything like that. So if you, and this is my own photo booth with my company. When I first started for several years, we we're using T6s or T5s. I'm sure a lot of that was like the go-to for our industry, like T5s and T6s. Yeah. A lot of mine still has T6s. Yeah. So and of course, there's people that will say like, oh, yeah, we use the, I don't know, I don't even know the name of some of these like full frame cameras, like what is it, a Mark M5 or whatever, like, yeah, you definitely can put that into your photo booth. But that's not going to be the best solution for you if you have multiple booths, like you're not going to be able to do backups. If you have like a, a fleet of like eight photo booths, you cannot put a Mark V with a backup for eight photo booths. Like there's, that wouldn't even make financial sense. Even though those are great cameras, that doesn't make, that's not the best for your situation, you know? So even though that's a great recommendation on a camera, that doesn't mean it's practical, you know? It's not the best solution for you. And that's the reason why when you ask like, what's the best camera, what's the best um, software, it is all relative to like your skill set, your knowledge, your existing hardware, your existing experience and like your capabilities you know, um, in the situation, like you mentioned the, the men booth, like it's also my favorite booth as well, but obviously I'm not going to use it for a drop off or yes, something like that. So, exactly. you know, definitely not the best booth for that scenario. So exactly. there's always going to be. Yeah. That's the reason why we have different types of um, kiosks because I, I mean, I've done drop offs with men booths, but you are, you know, you're, it's way more involved because all the interworkings inside of like the camera, the flash and things like that. Whereas like an iPad booth that you can just drop and it literally is just an iPad. Like the worst thing that can happen is like it gets unplugged, runs out of power, but that's easy for you to troubleshoot. So for mm -hmm. a drop off, of course, an iPad's always going to be the best solution unless your client is wanting specific output, then, you know, again, 
it's relative to like the situation. You know, most of our drop offs are going to be iPad boost, but there's certain situations where the client is like, no, I don't want that type of output. I want this type. Of course, you work out all the math, but an iPad wouldn't fit that specific client. So that wouldn't be the best photo booth for that client. So, yeah. yeah, having those conversations, having the knowledge and experience behind you, um, being able to like play with the different software, different printers. That's why, you know, I know you keep saying like, go to PBX meet the vendors, see the product. Like I can't stress enough, like how big of a deal it is. Cause I often hear like some providers that are like new to the market. They're like, no, I, I'm fine. I don't need to go to that. I already know what's on the market. And it's different when you're actually there and you're actually seeing like what these prints produce, like what these printers produce, like how fast they do it, the size of it, like just being there and seeing and touching and experiencing like the entire from like capture, to print, to like being handed the print, stuff like that is like really valuable. Cause I think a lot of people who end up buying mirrors, I think a lot of them don't actually see the mirrors. They just like the idea. It seems mm -hmm. to me like they yeah, like the idea of the mirror. They're excited because social media is posting like, you know, how much money you can make. Look at how these magic mirrors, so amazing. And they don't physically see the mirror in person. So they can't even gauge how huge it is, you know, unless you're acting actually like at pbx and you see like wow this thing is like bigger than me <laughs> you know like when you actually are there and you you know you can actually like lift it up you're like how the heck am i and that's when you start thinking like okay i need a vehicle big enough but if you're just ordering stuff online there could be tons of people raving about the mirror booth and it might be an am amazing booth but unless you see it you don't know what type of challenges you're gonna face buying that mirror booth or buying that min booth or whatever you know whatever like the multicam like the multicam is beautiful and you people see the output when they're you know they see everybody going to pbx the output is amazing i love yeah, that great example yes but when you're there and you actually see how big that setup is for those amazing array shots it's like what is it like 18 i mean amazing 18 and complex cameras. it's like 18 camera and then when you look through the back and you're like oh my god like this is crazy. Like it's tons and tons of wires. Then you understand like, okay, this is the reason why people are charging a premium because this is like a photo booth times a hundred because you're talking about crazy wires and, and just the connectivity and troubleshooting. If one camera goes down for you to like source which camera it is, I mean, it's a beast of a setup. And you don't really realize that because when you're online, all you see is like, wow, this looks so simple. You know, they snapped the photo and they got this amazing array output, video output. But when you're there, you actually see it, you know, those arrays are like, I would say those were for many years, those were like my unicorn experience that I wanted to bring. But when I actually got into it, it was a lot. It was very overwhelming. It was a lot. Yeah. And I feel like when people buy boosts without like physically seeing them or even touching them or or like messing around with it, it they don't realize like how overwhelming things are until they actually until they actually already have purchased it. You know, I've heard a lot of like buyer's remorse where they're like sold on the marketing side and then when they buy it, they're like, Oh my god, this is like not what I had imagined at all. You know, and so going to PBX, trying out the software, sometimes I mean Amazon has a really great return policy. I'm not I'm not encouraging anybody to like buy and then return, but they have a really great return policy. So like, if you want to try out some cameras, like try a few out that you think might be a good fit and cameras have different dimensions too. Like right now we have like little fifties and M six and they fit in our, our photo booths. Certain, I know some of the iPad booths only fit those smaller format yeah. those smaller <clears throat> cameras so like when you're asking for the best camera and you purchase the photo booth that only fits like a certain computer or only fits a certain camera there's no point in you even asking what the best camera is because it might not even fit in the hardware you may not have purchase. any options yeah you might not because that's one of the things with the min boost like i know i was looking for something that was not a sur I, I mean surface pros are fine it's just i wanted the flexibility of having like a touch screen with a separate pc in case we have to switch it out really fast and there's just no option you know there's no option that i have found where i could do just like a touch screen with a separate pc because the surface pro is a four by three ratio and most most um touch screens are the wider what is it mm -hmm. like 12 by 9 or something like that whatever those dimensions like they they're not the same I think 16 by 9 16 i think i'm not 9. sure yeah 
16 by 9, yeah. So they're not the same ratio. So for me to even ask, like, what's the best touch screen out there that's like 16 inches? 16 inches on a Surface Pro is a 4 by 3 ratio versus like your traditional touch screen, which is 16 by 9. Like, I have not found anything that replaces that, you know? And that's, that's again, pointless for me to ask what's the best touch screen because there's none that will fit what the Min Booth Surface Pro fits, you know? There was like one PC that I found, but it's a tablet. But yeah. Yeah. So I guess that, that, uh, hopefully gives you something to think about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, ultimately it sounds like people should start with the kiosk because I mean, also some cameras, some kiosks don't allow, uh, like portrait or landscape, like you can't rotate the camera. Yeah. So, so definitely the first step is knowing what you need and, and who you want to serve and who your customer is, uh, and, and kind of getting an idea of what that looks like in the way of, of uh, kiosks and then decide what kind of kiosk you want and go go from there. But uh, if you have any questions, we're happy to help. We can't tell you what the best is, but uh, we're happy to, to give you some advice and tell you things that we have tried and failed at or uh, what we're currently using and things like that. But thanks again for popping in and uh, good luck finding the best software software camera <laughs> to keep the conversation going join our facebook group pro booth talk community if you enjoyed this podcast consider showing your support by subscribing liking reviewing or sharing this topic with someone in the industry